Unreal Engine is being used more and more in the ArcVis industry, product design industry, and cinematography industry. And if you are a 3D artist and you use Unreal Engine, you definitely should know about the Alembic files, or ABC files for short. These type of files have the property to export 3D models with animations without the need of using bones, skeletons, or rigs like the metahumans in Real Engine or any other type of character. Mainly you can use this type of files to export pre-baked simulations to Unreal Engine. Simulations such as liquid sims, particle sims, destruction sims and the one that we're gonna learn in this video, cloud simulations, like the one that you saw before. Let's start the tutorial jumping right into Blender. Okay guys, now in Blender we're gonna create a plane which gonna work as our curtain. We're gonna rotate it and scale it and modify it a little bit. Pressing tab, we're gonna enter to the editing mode. We're gonna extrude this edge so now we have a larger plane. Press right click to subdivide it and then in this little panel, we're gonna subdivide it by 10 times. Okay guys, now we have a basic plane which we're gonna use to simulate our cloth. Now we're gonna press Ctrl A and hit apply to all transforms. So this way, we're not gonna have rotation, location, and scale problems in the future. So now guys, we're gonna go to the modifier panel, and here we're gonna add a cloud simulations. Now we're gonna press this little button, which gonna send us to the physics panel. Here we have a lot of physical properties, which we can tweak as the way as we want, but right now we're gonna keep this tutorial simple. And now if we hit play to run the simulations, we're gonna see that our plane falls into the void. And that happens because the cloth is affected by the gravity and we don't have any surface to act as a floor. So we're gonna come back to the frame 1 and now we're gonna create a new plane to act as a floor and that way our curtain don't fall away. And then selecting this plane, we're gonna go to the physics panel and we're gonna hit collision. Just leave it as it is and now if we hit play, now we're gonna see that our plane falls over this floor but right now, as we can see, our plane is still really low poly, it looks like a mesh more than a cloth, so we have to increase the polygon count and detail of our mesh. We're gonna go to the modifier panel and we're gonna add the subdivision modifier. That way we're multiplying the vertex count and by simply dragging this modifier above the cloth simulation and now if we hit play, we're gonna see that our plane falls a little bit more natural, objectively it looks better. But wait, there's something that is kinda off. We're gonna see that our plane and our polygons are not colliding each other, and actually it's overlapping itself, and that's something that we don't want. And to fix that, we have to go to the simulation panel, and here we're gonna scroll down where it says collision. Here we're gonna keep scrolling down where it says self collisions. And now if we hit play again, we're gonna see that this animation looks way better, looks way natural, and even it unfolds when it's on the ground. It looks really really nice. So now to make it look better, we're gonna select our plane, we're gonna press right click and press shade smooth. And as you can see it looks really better and apparently it hides really well the polygons and looks way more natural. But right now we're trying to make a curtain not a cloth and we don't want it in the floor. So right now to hang this curtain, we have to press tab to go into the editing mode and we're gonna select all the vertices on top. Then we're gonna go to the vertex group panel and on the first panel we're gonna press this plus button. It's gonna create a new vertex group, which we're gonna rename as pins. Then hit assign, then deselect and select to make sure that all these vertices are well selected. We're gonna press tab again to go back to the object mode and we're gonna go to the physics panel, scroll down where it says shape and here you will see an option called pin group. Here we're gonna look for our vertex groups and we're gonna apply it. And now if we hit play, we're gonna see that nothing happens. But actually the simulation is still running. The thing is that our plane is hanging from the top vertices and that way we make our carting not falling. Ok guys, to make it look more realistic, we have to add some forces, like the wind. We're gonna press Shift A and we're gonna go down where it says Force Fields. Here we're gonna add wind and we're gonna rotate it and place it beside our curtain. Here in the right panel, we're gonna change the strength to a value of a thousand. And if we hit play, now we're gonna see that our cloth is moving and swinging like a real piece of cloth. You could use this wind force 
but personally I prefer to use another, this one called Turbulence. And now you're gonna see why. We're gonna move it beside the curtain, change the strength, and we're gonna hit play. Here we're gonna tweak a little bit the strength value and the size value. And now as you can see this looks way more natural than only the wind. And this is the shape that I want. Ok guys, as you can see I'm currently running into a problem. As you can see the simulation doesn't go far than 250 frames, even if I have the timeline set in 500. And that's because the simulation runs a part of the timeline. If we go to the physics panel, scroll down where it says cache, and here we can change the length of our simulations and even pre-bake the simulation so that way our PC doesn't have to calculate frame by frame every time we hit play. But right now we're gonna set the end point to 500 and if we hit play and as you can see our simulation is still running far than 250 frames. Ok guys this is looking good, we're going to the right way, but actually this still doesn't look as a curtain, it may look even as a towel, but not a curtain. And that's because the curtains has a really specific shape, so right now we're gonna change that. Now what we're gonna do is creating a new object and link the vertices on top to the new object so that way we'll be able to modify it, to animate it, to move it, scale it, anything. And now we're gonna create a new box, this box is gonna be the object which we're gonna link to the vertices, we're gonna scale it a little bit and move it on top. Now we're gonna go to the object panel, scroll down where it says viewport display and where it says displays as we're gonna change it from textured to wire. That way our box is not too intrusive. And finally we're gonna select our curtain and here we're gonna add the copy scale modifier. And here where it says axis we're gonna leave selected the axis which is gonna affect our scale, in this case is the y axis, so we're gonna uncheck the x and c axis. And now if we hit play, run the simulation and at the same time we scale our box, we're gonna see that our plane folds and creates these curtain shapes. This guys is looking really good. So right now guys we're gonna press Ctrl C to undo everything and set the cube to the original size. Now we're gonna automate the animation, we're gonna press the I key and we're gonna select the scale option. This is gonna create a new keyframe on the timeline. We're gonna move the timeline to the frame 40 and then we're gonna scale our box, press I key and again press the scale button. This is gonna create another keyframe and if we go back to the timeline we're gonna see that the animation is already done. Now guys selecting the curtain we're gonna add another subdivision modifier and now hitting play we're gonna see that our simulation looks fantastic. Here I wanted to make our curtain bigger, so I just simply duplicate our plane and merge these two pieces in the middle. So that way if we hit play again, we're gonna see that everything looks amazing. So guys, we're on the final details. If we look in a side view, we're gonna see that our curtain moves forwards and backwards. And that is something that it could cause a problem. Because if we export this animation just as it is, when we add it to our scene, this curtain could overlap our window, doors or walls. So we're gonna easily fix that, just by creating a new plane, move it to the place where your window or wall is and give it a collision modifier. And if this problem happens to you, that's because of the normals of this plane. This you can fix it really easy just by rotating this plane. Now if we hit play, we're gonna see that our simulations runs perfectly. And that way our curtain doesn't go over where it should be our wall or our window. Lastly we're gonna go to the physics panel and we're gonna go where it says cache and we're gonna hit bake to pre-bake the simulation. This could take a few minutes depending of the power of your PC or how detailed and dense your mesh is, so I suggest you to be patient. Once the baking is done, now we can see that our animation runs smoothly and even we can delete all these planes and the animation is still perfect. Now I'm gonna make a few tweaks to make it look better, just rising a little bit this plane, so now our curtain hits the floor and now it looks better and a little bit more aesthetic. Well guys we are done, if you made it to this point congratulations, now you made a really good looking curtain. The last thing we have to do is exporting this curtain to Unreal Engine, just by simply going to the file tab, export and we're gonna select the alembic file or .abc. Here the only options we are gonna select are the only selected objects and where it says subdivisions we're gonna hit apply. And that's it guys, now we hit export. 
Once the export is over, now we're gonna jump into Unreal Engine. Here in our Unreal Engine project, we're gonna hit import and we're gonna select our curtain file. Here in this new window, we're gonna change the import type from static mesh to geometry cache. Now we're gonna scroll down where it says conversion and here on scale, we're gonna set these values to 100 and then hit import. Once our mesh is import, we're gonna drag it to our scene and as we can see on our scene, I think I exaggerated a little bit with the scale but don't worry, here on the right panel, we're gonna scale it back to a point one. we're gonna rotate our plane and now if we press play, we're gonna see that this animation looks amazing but if we move a little bit the camera, we're gonna see that the shadows and the backside of our mesh, it just looks transparent. And that's because we need to add the proper material for this curtain. And here we're gonna do a really basic material, pressing the right click, we're gonna search for a constant 3 vectors, and this node we're gonna link it to the base color and give it a white color. And lastly, on the details panel, we're gonna press the two-sided option. As you can see, if we go to the back side of our curtain, we're gonna see that everything looks way better, there's no more transparency, and the shadows looks way better as well. Now guys, finishing this video, I'm gonna show you how to control the animation on the sequencer for your cinematics. We're gonna create a new sequence, rename it as curtain or whatever you want, and we're gonna drag the curtain from the outliner to the sequencer panel. Here, pressing the plus button, we're gonna select the Geometry Cache option. And that way, as you can see here, now it creates in the timeline all this block which represents the animation of a curtain. We can drag it along the timeline to the position where it looks better. And that's it guys, now you have your brand new curtain into Unreal Engine made 100% by you. And to be honest guys, this looks amazing. As I said in the beginning of the video, you can use these Alembic files for cloud simulations, liquid simulations, destruction simulations, and a lot more of simulations that you can do in softwares like Blender, Maya, Houdini, or even Cinema 4D. So guys, that's how we can import these 3D animations into Unreal Engine. Personally, I feel way more comfortable with the Blender simulation tools, a lot more than real ones. And these Alembic files with the VDV files that we saw in previous videos give me all the confidence to be able to experiment in external programs than Unreal Engine and then bringing all the simulations into my scene, giving that extra punch that my scene needs. Let me know what kind of simulations you will use with these type of files in your projects. Have you ever came across with these type of files? I wanna read all your comments down below. And now that you're down there, click the like button if you liked the video or if you learned something new today. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of the new videos that we upload. Follow us on our social networks, we have Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, as well as on my Instagram, TikTok and Spotify account. And just remember guys that this is XVS Studio Cinematica, and I'll see you on the next video.